So I, I want to explain a gin particle. Okay. Awesome. I've been waiting for us to actually drink on this show for the longest time. <laughs> uh, this is different. This relates to time travel. Really? Oh, yeah. I got to tell you the truth. I am completely unfamiliar with the term gin particle for time travel. It doesn't have to be a, a thing, okay. a particle. It can be an idea. It is something that is trapped in time. Interesting. Okay. I'll give an example. All right. Let's start from pop culture. Remember uh, Back to the Future? Of course. There's the scene where Marty plays- Marty! Okay. <laughs> so Marty is at the dance. Right. Okay. He decides to play because Marvin Berry got his hand injured right. trying to for open the trunk. So Marty plays the guitar for him. And then Marty starts playing Chuck Berry. Yes. Okay. So this is 1955. The Chuck Berries didn't, didn't really, late 50s, early 60s, right? So it predates the actual appearance of, which was, was it Johnny B. Good? So he's playing it. And Marvin Berry mm -hmm. hears it, right? Calls his brother. Hey, Chuck, it's me, Marvin. No, your cousin, Marvin Berry. Yes, Marvin Berry. For the purposes of this bit, I must say my whole name. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so he holds up the phone. And Chuck Berry, who we presume is on the other side of the line, is hearing... Hearing Johnny B. Good. Johnny B. Good, played by... Michael Marty. J. Fox, Michael who J. is Mar Marty. Okay. Marty McFly. So, so when I first saw that, mm -hmm. I said, did they go again? Crediting white people for that. <laughs> so now white people founded rock and roll. <laughs> that, that was my first thought. Remember, it was 1985. That's right. And I, you know... Yeah. Uh, all right. I was my first thought. But then I realized <laughs> the implications of it. Right. Okay, the implications are Chuck Berry hears this, mm -hmm. and then he creates that song, mm -hmm. and that's the song that Marty plays. So we can ask the question: because Was that song ever written? Right. Because the only way that Chuck Berry heard it was because Marty McFly played it. But the only way that Marty McFly played it is because Chuck. Barry played it first right. in his frame of reference. Correct. So, but when he goes back in time, he actually creates it. But he Correct. couldn't have created it because it was already created before he went back exactly. in time. Exactly. So, so it's just so, one so, big freaking so, paradox <laughs> that never ends. No, no. So the song. That's so wild. The song was never created. Right. It only ever existed in this time loop. Right. Right. The song only in the time loop. In the time loop. Right. That's no one wrote that song. Right. So right. So it's a gin song in that sense. That's, Not a gin particle. It's a gin song. That's pretty wild. It was never created or destroyed because it lives in that loop. It lives in the time loop. One person hands it to the next person, hands right. it to the next person. Right. Okay. So that's, that's a that's a gin situation. That's wild. Okay. So there's another example in a less popular film. It's somewhere in time. One of the first movies made by uh, Christopher Reeve after Superman. He is the love interest of a woman mm -hmm. who's like 90 years old, oh, okay? Really? He, he's, a, he's a college professor. An old woman comes up to him and says to him, come back to me. Okay. And she hands him a locket or some bit of jewelry. She's alive now, but she's 90 something. Then he figures out maybe if he goes back in time, he can meet her. So he goes, he's on a college campus, so he visits some physicists it's always good to have friends who are physicists mm -hmm. to help yeah, you out. exactly, especially when you want to go back in time. Especially, it's because, yeah. because otherwise, yeah. what are you doing? Right. right, so he goes to his physicist friend, and they say, we've been working on this method and the tool you have to, in your mind, and you have to get ready, you have to get dressed for it, whatever. Okay, so he manages to go back in time mm. to this resort on the beach where he knows she was checking into the hotel. It's a resort, checks mm -hmm. into the hotel. So he sees her come up. She doesn't know who he is. Of course, because okay. she's back in time. <clears throat> she's back in time. They meet each other, and they fall in love, and she says, 
how did you find me? He said, I, I'm from the future and I came back in time for you. What? And as a token of his love, he gifts her the jewelry. Ah. Oh, another gin. That's a gin particle. Ob object. Because it's a gin object. she gave it to him. Yes. So how does she give it to him? But unless, she got it. Unless he came back to her. To give it to, to her. To give it to her. Yes. Oh, snap. Yes. That's so this, this locket, it was never created nor, nor destroyed. destroyed. It lives in that in that time loop. In that time loop. That's yo, that's pretty wild, man. It's wild. It's wild. That's wild. If you're gonna say there's time travel, you have to admit that this kind of thing can happen. Right. And you might ask, is there some metaverse that creates it that sneaks into the timeline to make it happen? Right. I don't know. That's another frontier of thought. Beyond because this is already at the limits yeah. of how we're thinking about how the world works. Right. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's wild. That's though. an example of yeah. a of a gin particle. I love it. I love it. I, uh, you know, also I love the fact that he went back in time to stalk this lady because <laughs> stalker. That's honestly, uh, you know, uh, first she. No, but he's a handsome man. Yeah, but he was she Superman. stalked. She stalked him first. That's, that's true. The deal. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. These are just two stalkers who found each other. <laughs> that's really what's happening here. <laughs> and back then it was like before the internet, so that was the closest thing to online. It could be Enjoy. you show up at somebody's lecture, yes. and say yeah. you stalk them at the talk. Yeah, and because let me tell you something: if an old lady comes up to me with some jewelry and it's just like, "Come back to me," I'm be like, "Look, first of all, I do not know you. That is the first thing. Secondly, thanks for the jewelry. Third, I am going to go hawk this. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Okay, and then you miss the opportunity to go back in time. So that's about all I got to say. I love the whole gym particle idea, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And those are the two, I think, most interesting examples of it. Right. But you can now, if you know gin particles exist, you can construct anything you want. I mean, you, you can write stories all about gin particles. Right. Right. And yeah. no, you don't have to worry about who made them. That's pretty cool, man. Right. I, I really dig it. Yeah. Right. Well, it'd be fun if you, if you made a time machine that was itself a gym particle. Oh, wow. That's a little too meta for me. Cause... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right now my head is hurting. I'm being I'm being honest. It's cuz I'm trying to figure out okay, the time machine itself is a <gasps> No, you gift me a time I, machine. Right. No, you come into the future, you gift, you gift me a time, time machine. machine. I take it back into the past and I hand it to you. To you. Right. And that's how I invent the time machine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you're on I... record for the invention of the time machine cuz I handed it to you exactly. after you gave it to me in the future. Exactly. And then the time machine itself is a gin particle. Is a gin particle. Right. That's very meta. Yeah, that is more than meta. By the way, yeah. Rick and Morty. Rick came back to himself to make himself invent the the uh, the portal gun. The, the portal gun gives them, gives him access to all. Okay, the... I've seen a lot of episodes. I, I haven't seen. Yeah, that that's one. yeah, that's uh, that's like one of the like throwback origin story uh, episodes okay. where they go right. back to show you how things happen. So Rick and Morty is the cartoon um, representation of of Doc the, and 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 Marty McFly. and Marty McFly. That's right. Because yeah. Rick is a little bit of a crazy scientist, and, right. and Morty is just kind of going along for the ride, yeah, and doesn't really understand anything, right? But there it is. Oh, one last thing: there is such a thing as flux, right? Flux in physics is the measure of a field through an area. Okay. So you can have magnetic flux, you can have electrical flux, you can have so as long as you have an area and something moving through it, you can measure that. That's so it's like flux. flow. Flow. Okay. Okay. It's flux. And there is also such a thing as a capacitor. Right. A capacitor is a metal plate, mm -hmm. and charges build up on that metal plate. Mm -hmm. And you have another metal plate that faces it, and you can have a voltage across, Going across these two plates. Two, okay. okay. So, but there is no such thing as a flux capacitor. Oh. I don't know. Now you just ruined the movie for me, man. <laughs> what? Oh, that's the only thing that ruined the movie for you. <laughs> you were all in. I was all in for everything because it all came down to the flux capacitor. Now the movie is just crap to me. <laughs> all right, Neil deGrasse Tyson here. As always, keep looking up. Uh -huh.